Welcome back. In this short video, what I want to do is demonstrate using some pictures that I've drawn on the board, uh, a very useful technique that we chemists use in the lab to neutralize an acid with a base or technically to neutralize a base with an acid. And this is called acid-base titration. Uh, it is a lab that we would probably spend at least two or three days on and you would become really competent at using the uh, glassware. We'll have to wait uh, for another time to do that and you'll have to bear with my uh, pretty poor artwork in the process. So here we go, acid-base titration on the board. So. What is acid-base titration? It, it's, a, it's a process that, that's used in a lot of industries where we have to determine concentrations of acids and bases. The food industry, the petrochemical industry, it's used in steel making. It, it's just a very common procedure that we use. And it's quantitative, which means it's very mathematical and if you're an analytical person and you like to do things in a very meticulous way, then titration is probably something that you'll enjoy. On the other hand, if you're kind of a haphazard, fly by the seat of your pants kind of person in the lab, you might not like titration much at all. I happen to like it. Uh, patience is really important and I have a lot of it when I'm in the lab. Uh, that's probably because I like teaching chemistry. In any case, we use this technique, which is very quantitative, to determine the concentration of an unknown acid or base. We'll do some problems later and, and identify which is the unknown. For now, it really doesn't matter. So what have we got? Well, we've got uh, a big long tube. It's probably that long and it's 50 milliliters, it's a narrow tube. It's got a stopcock or a valve on the bottom and a tip. So this is called the burette rat tip at the bottom. Below that, we're working on the lab bench, so you can't see my lab bench, it's invisible here. But we have a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, standard equipment in, in any lab bench, basically. You gotta make sure everything is clean, clean, clean. We also have a pipette, and these are called volumetric pipettes. The one that we use the most often in the chemistry lab is 25 milliliters. And it has a big 25 right on the reservoir. This is called the reservoir of the, of the pipette and this is called the tip. This is a hunk of glass. It's very dangerous if you don't use it properly. And again, part of the technique is to be able to pipette water safely. You're just gonna have to imagine that we can do this. We have a rubber bulb on the end or a pipette pump. Uh, we actually have both in our lab. Typically, I, I get students to, to experiment with both techniques. I tend to like the bulb, but the pipette pump might be a little bit easier for some of you to use. So we're gonna put the acid in the pipette. We're gonna put the base in the burette. I always kind of do that in grade 11 because base starts with B and burette starts with B as well. Uh, so. So what are our steps? Well, the acid eventually is gonna end up in our uh, flask and we're going to neutralize the acid with the base. And of course, uh, we have learned about acid-base indicators already. You may remember uh, the one indicator with the big long word, phenolphthalein. That's a hard one to spell. P-H-E-N-O-L-P-H-T-A-L-E-I-N or you could just abbreviate it PHTH, whatever turns your crank. So, our steps go as follows. You get your, your beer at, you don't know where it's been. It's been used by hundreds of other kids. It's dirty glassware, you rinse it out. You probably rinse it out with distilled water. You never use tap water because tap water has ions in it that will make it impure and affect your data. So use distilled water. Then we rinse out our burette very carefully with the base that we're about to use. And in this case, it would be sodium hydroxide, a very dilute solution, not dangerous, uh, but you should always wear safety gear anyways. 
once you've rinsed out the burette and you've allowed some of it to go through the stopcock down through the tip and you're confident that the entire burette is wet with the base only then you can fill up the burette to the 0.0, .0 mark at the very top and use the bottom of the meniscus remember the bottom of the meniscus looks like this and basically at eye level there's your eyeball again not the greatest artist but this would be the, the top of the burette and you would be confident that that, that burette is full with base no bubbles number three you would use the 25 mil pipette and the bulb obtain some hydrochloric acid again very accurate you've got to be very meticulous to to put this into a beaker that's an awful looking beaker but just bear with me imagine that's our hydrochloric acid and you can pull up the acid until it reaches a mark uh, just like we talked about with the volumetric flask before and that will be your 25.00 milliliters of acid you can dispense that into your flask and you're getting close now if you don't do the next step it will appear like you're adding water to water and nothing will happen never a good thing we need the indicator to indicate when the acid in the flask has been completely neutralized by the base in the burette and that indicator like i said moments ago is phenolphthalein remember it's clear in acid and it's it's pink in base so when you put it into your acid you won't see it we usually put five drops of phenolphthalein in, in there six seven doesn't matter as long as you have at least five when you start to add the base very carefully we can monitor the changes and at a certain point and and it will take one drop or maybe even a half a drop the difference between a good titration and a poor one will be the intensity of the pink color that appears at the very point where you have completely neutralized this acid in the flask with the base and the burette that's when the indicator turns pink and we're looking for the faintest pink we can come up with that is called the end point of the titration and that signals when you're done adding base from the burette and at that point you're going to turn your stopcock off perpendicular to the tube this looks like it's parallel and it would be running this would be perpendicular and then you would record the volume to the nearest hundredth of a milliliter on the burette that takes practice you'll have to just assume that we're perfectly good at it without stepping foot in the lab through some miracle and that is basically the technique uh, from there we can do our mathematics to determine uh, which concentration was unknown so we, we have to know the concentration and volume of, of either the acid or the base and know the volume of the other but not the concentration we, we can't have two unknowns we got to have one and uh, our next step is to actually look at the mathematics uh, using some data that we would obtain in a lab much like this one so there you have it acid base titration in less than nine minutes typically this lab would take us a full period uh, to do just to get acquainted with the glassware and then another day or so to get really good at it and we did it in nine minutes.